uh, the uh, director of the uh, Institute for Interpreting and Translation Studies at Stockholm University. My name is Jan Peterson, and I'm an associate professor in translation studies focusing on uh, audiovisual translation, particularly subtitling. There are several problems. Uh, one thing is that there isn't a common way of measuring quality for interlingual subtitling. And also the major, main problem here is also that um, uh, quality isn't a priority, hasn't been a prioritized area for, for the, the last 20 years or so, which means that the companies, providers of subtitles tend to uh, focus on competing through pricing rather than through quality. And in the end, of course, it's the viewers that suffer from this. The consequences is that you cannot compare subtitles. You cannot, cannot compare subtitles that are good, subtitles that are, uh, that are bad in an objective way, which means that you, are, you have intuitive ways or you have uh, ways that are based on company guidelines to say that we are delivering quality, but that means that it is the providers themselves that define the quality. And you can't, cannot compare the uh, subtitles provided by uh, two different providers, and that means that there is no objective way of measuring quality and making sure that you get good quality subtitles. Okay. And if you don't get good quality subtitles, the viewers don't want to watch your television show, and they don't think that subtitlers are doing a good job. Well, quality is a tricky thing to, to, to measure, and that's why it hasn't been done in, an, uh, in, an, uh, in a generalized way before. Mm -hmm. Of course, people have measured quality in, in various ways, but not in a generalized way. Uh, and it, it is difficult, but it's also very important. And what the FAR model does is that it measures quality in three different areas. It checks for functional equivalence, hence the F. Uh, which is how good is the translation? Does the, trans, uh, the translated text actually reflect uh, what is being said in the uh, film? And the second uh, area is acceptancy, which is uh, translation studies language for how good the uh, target language is. If the subtitles uh, provide you with good Danish or good Swedish or good English or, or whatever the target language of the subtitles are, uh, that's a different thing from providing good translation. Uh, readability is all about the presentation of the subtitles, that they are placed correctly on the screen, that they uh, show up when people start to talk and that they go away before someone else starts to talk, if that is what you want, and that they're uh, on screen long enough for you to be able to read them and they, that the lines are the acquired number and so on and so forth, and punctuation and all sorts of things. Well, the thing about it, which I think is the advantages, is that it tries at least to be gen completely generalized, that it can be used for any subtitles uh, produced in any language as long as you feel it local norms. And also that it covers all the areas that you need to cover when you talk about subtitling, uh, both how good the translation is, how good the language is, and how, how uh, good the presentation of the subtitles are. It for, for comparing uh, fan sub subtitles produced by amateurs uh, to professional subtitles, and it was very clear and in an, uh, in an objective way using this model to see that the fan subs were not reaching the quality standards of the professional subtitles. Well, everybody wins, I think, uh, <laughs> particularly the viewers first, obviously, because they get good subtitles that don't annoy them, and with that, they stop being mad at the subtitlers for producing bad subtitles. And also the providers uh, win from this as well, because they can, with this model, uh, they can actually show that they're producing good quality subtitles, and then that means that they can compete using uh, quality and not only pricing. Well, the reason why uh, subtitlers uh, don't get the respect that they deserve is that their output isn't good enough. Uh, and for many for many subtitlers, the, the output is very good. It's extremely good. But for, for some, it's not. And it's the mistakes that stand out. And uh, as long as you get mistakes in subtitling and, and frequent errors, then people aren't going to respect your work. And that 
And since people don't know subtitles, they don't know who has produced the subtitles, they, they, they're not able to say that this was produced by this person, I'm sure it will be good, or it was produced by someone else and it's probably not going to be good. They just blame all subtitles for producing poor subtitling. And of course, there's the other issue as well of people not understanding properly how difficult it is to make subtitles, that sometimes you have to rephrase or paraphrase what people are saying to make it fit into those two pesky lines at the bottom of the screen.